I was in the SEC and that's the greatest conference in the US. It's one of the hardest. It, but it will eat you up and spit you out like it's nothing. So <laughs> you have to be prepared. You have to be confident. confident. You have to be ready because everybody want to win. When I went back um, to Alabama after the Olympics and after seeing all of this, I was like, boy, you had to train hard because yeah, if you want to be on this stage, it's not going to come easy. Multiple practices, I vomit, dog. Multiple <laughs> practices, I vomit. I keep pushing myself. I keep pushing myself every practice in, in and out. I keep pushing myself. Very big for me. And then 34 by 4 goal. I know that we had a chance to, um, to be the US. Um, mm. But I know it would have to be. It would have, I, in my mind, I was thinking it had to pan out the way it did. Because yeah. I feel like. If we were too far behind, we, we didn't have a chance. If we got the baton in front, we definitely didn't have a chance. If we got it in a close second, I know for sure it would have been over. And exactly how we thought it could have happened for us to win, that same way it happened. And it really is like that in track and field sometimes. Um, you can't always have a good day, although you would want to. And I feel like times like that is what make you enjoy the sport and enjoy victories. Because I feel like without joy, there is no, um, without sorrow, there is no joy, you know? So they had to go hand in hand. You have to enjoy both parts of it to, you know, have joy in anyone. What's going on, guys? Hope you're all keeping safe and keeping active. We are back with another episode of the Athletics Productions podcast, which is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Victor, and we have a special man flying in from the island of Trinidad, um, Jareem Richards. What is going on? How are you? Well, I good, I good. I just um, not too long finished practice. Got yeah, a little weight mm-hmm. session in this morning, and it went good, so, you know. So what's it, what's it like for you guys? Is it back to normal? Actually, getting back to normal, we've been, um, we've been without a case for the last 10 days. We had a total of 116 cases. We had eight deaths and everyone is recovered. So we're starting back to get somewhat to normal right now. Um, the only things that are open right now is um, restaurants. Well, obviously, no one could sit inside and eat, but... We, we get in there sooner, so, yeah. Okay. All right, so have you missed any training or has it just been, like, one-to-ones with your coach or just you on the field? Like, we are basically, like, going to train on the field because all the track is closed. Too. Yeah, track's closed. Um, I use an intramural field, a grass field, and all the gyms closed so um, my father in law actually has some some um, gym equipment there so that's where I, I work out at the gym other than that I, I'm doing the best I could do with the resources I have yeah nice I think that's I think that's everybody I think everybody's struggling to to really get things going well again really because obviously you guys would have been training from what November yeah November time or did you take a break after world champs I took like about six weeks and then I started mm. back training. So yeah, I started around October, no, wait, well, yeah, November. Yeah. After, yeah. after seeing that the World Champs was so late, how did you adjust your your training blocks from your previous season? Did you take extra time out at the back end of the previous season or did you kind of just go straight through and then... Um. I would say if I could recall, say we're talking about the 2018 off-season training leading into 19. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say it was tricky. I feel like we, me and my coach just kind of wondering how we're going to approach this year. If we want to run too early, you don't want to run too early or not. And I didn't run really early, honestly. I usually do one or two meets indoor. I didn't do any meets indoor. Mm. And I, I think I opened up at um, Florida relays. I ran like two relays and a 400. Um, mm. So we just kind of wait into the later half of the season or the beginning of the outdoor season to kind of get a feel of how fit we are at that point in time. I feel like I should have done indoor though, in my really? perspective. Yeah, but it was, I mean, 
at, at, at that point in time, we both thought it was the best idea with it being such a long year. So, but I actually, yeah. looking back, I feel like I should have run like maybe two meets in though, just to not be too rusty or to find yeah. a rhythm a little bit easier. Keep when yourself you, competitive, yeah. yeah. When you say indoors, what would you have run? Would you have done, because I know you do the two and the four. I never really see you do much 60s or, or 100s. So coming indoors, would you have done a 60 to see where you're at or would it have been a two and a four as well? Um, last year, I probably would have just done maybe uh, 600, maybe 400, and maybe mm. a 200 or a three. Um, this yeah. year, I was actually wanting to do a 60 because I, I feel like I feel like I could run like a six, seven, six, six. Not nothing mm. too fast, but none too slow. But um, sadly, coronavirus, dog, and you know we everything shut down. Where are you based at the moment for for training? Um, well, right now I'm in Trinidad and Tobago, and I would say mm. it was a blessing because I came home for um an event for one of my um local sponsors, and okay. it so happened it was maybe two weeks before Trinidad got its first case and started to lock down, and I've been stuck here ever since. So I okay, don't mind it I'm, because I'm, I'm here. That must be nice because obviously you get to spend time with family and <laughs> and, yes. and, and 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 vibes, so that yeah. can't be too bad. So where do you where do you usually train? Oh well, right now there's a really there's a really close intramural field near my house, and I do hills because I live relatively close to a hill. I do hills there sometimes, and we start by my father in law, and that's about it. What are the hill sessions like? Um, some days I have sprint hills. Some days I have like longer longer hills. So some days I might have like. Uh, 40, 60, 40 on the hill, 40 meters, 60 meters, maybe like three or four sets. And then other days I will have like 100 meter hills, like 10, 100 meter hills. So, yeah, that's how it is. Oh, that's wow. kind of how the hill <laughs> sessions go for me. One day is like a longer day of hill and one day is like a shorter sprint, sprint day of hills. Which one do you find harder? Um, They both hit different systems. So... Mm. The shorter day, it's shorter, but it because it's that it's short, harder. it's more intense. Yeah, you have to put out more effort. Um, and the longer day, you still have to put out somewhat um a good amount of effort, but at the same time, it's still longer. So you still have to build into your running. So for me, I would say honestly, maybe the shorter one might be harder in my case, because like I mm. really go hard on the short ones. The longer one. I kind of could ease into our tempo and, and, and get up there, but the short ones is like sprint all out sprint. And by the time you hit your last set, it's like you're asking yourself, <laughs> do I have the energy to sprint at that same intensity? You know? So Is the hill steep as well? Uh, not that steep. Caribbean have a lot of steep hills, there, but I yeah. chose, I strategically chose a, a, a gradual <laughs> hill because we have some steep, steep hills. I live um, in San Fernando, Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, you live in um, deep south. Yeah, South Trinidad. Okay. It's our real hills on my end. You know, so, yeah, I choose a good one though. Okay, when when you say hills, grass hills or like road hills? Road. Road dog. Back yeah. to the old time days, road. Yeah, you and your knees alone. You and your knees alone with that one. Nah, the, the, um, the knees and the shin strong. <laughs> well... I suppose if you're running on, on concrete, it has to be. Um, what got you into the sport in general? Because athletics isn't, obviously, as you know, it's not the the main sport worldwide. So everyone kind of yeah. gets brought in in a different way. So tell us how you got brought into athletics. Well, when I was younger in primary school, um, I tried football. I wasn't, I didn't like football at that point in my life. And I wasn't, I honestly wasn't good at it in primary school. I tried mm. cricket. Um, and we had like different sectors. So we tried batting. I wasn't good at batting because other kids was bowling the ball too fast. Um, mm. I tried bowling. I wasn't the best at bowling. I wasn't actually that bad of a bowler neither, though, but I wasn't the best. And I tried feeling and it was honestly the hardest thing is to catch a ball. When it's coming down, and I didn't just feel like I'm going to hit Yeah. So I wasn't good at that. But um, one thing I, I realized in PE, anything, 
anything we had to do with running or playing catch or anything like that, I was always the fastest. Um, mm. I remember in primary school, we had a game called Catch and Rescue where there's a group of people catching and there's a group of people running. And if someone gets caught, you put them in like a holding cell. And yeah. they would, my team would always bank on me to save them because I was faster than everyone. And mm. um, when I was in primary school, we had a tryout for um, zonal games. And I did the tryouts. I, I made the, the school team and went to the zonal games. And I won zonals. I won district. And when we went to primary school nationals, I came forward. But that's when I kind of realized at that young age, I probably was like eight, seven or eight years mm. old. I realized, well, you know, this is my talent. This is my sport. So, yeah, that's kind of where it started for me. Okay. And is track and field big in Trinidad? It, 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 so track and field, I would say in Trinidad and Tobago, is the most successful sport, hands down. Most successful okay. sport in uh-huh. Trinidad and Tobago. But in terms of popularity, football, cricket, track and field and swimming kind of battling. I was even yeah. swimming. That sounds yeah. very strange because like not a lot of people say swimming. <laughs> yeah. The cricket, I can, I, I will vibe with that. That's, that's like standard. Football yeah. again, it's like, I don't know a country that doesn't like football. So that's, un- that's understandable. Um, so coming through the ranks and, and, you know, as you get older, the competition gets a little bit harder. Is there a lot of competitions in the school system as you get older? Or, do you kind of, so, or does it kind of tail off and then start back again? So in Trinidad and Tobago, we don't really have much of a school system. We probably, as schools, you maybe have four or five meets with a year, but it's mm-hmm. more club heavy. So okay. I would run for my primary school. I would run for my secondary school. But most weekends, I would run for my club. And that's kind of how it, it, it goes off um, for us. And yeah, it, it was it was definitely um, more competitive because you would find some kids from North Trinidad that you probably wouldn't see on a regular basis or different parts of Trinidad and Tobago that you wouldn't bounce up until you go to meets and their clubs mm. came together. So we more have a club system instead of um, a school-based system. And yeah, it gets competitive. That's similar to what we've got here, really, isn't it? Because we're yeah. mainly club. Um, there's obviously probably two, three major school events, but it's generally just club. You have yeah. more competitions for your club than you do anywhere else. Also, a question that I don't actually know the answer, that I've never um, never thought about. Um, do you do competitions with Tobago? Because obviously you're two separate islands. So yeah, do you guys have yeah, we, that kind of setup we do. Well? Yeah. So, so sometimes there's meets in Tobago that we travel to. Most majority mm-hmm. of our meets do is in Trinidad. And they would come over to, to um, compete against us. So yeah. Okay. We definitely go vibes. against the bagel. Vibes, vibes, vibes. Yeah. Um, what brought you to the decision to go study in the US? Um, when I was young, I had I feel like everybody had this dream. I wanted to mm. be a professional athlete. And yeah. I was weighing my options. And you know, I always used to hear people say you can't um cap all the eggs in one basket, so you always have to have a plan B. And mm. my last year on the 20, I ran like Oh, I think around 46 to and 2072. 20, and obviously that's not fast enough to go professional. So mm. the next decision for me was to um, go to the US. So I didn't have the grades at the point in time to go to straight to D1. So I had to go to junior college and I went to Salt Plains College. And that's a, a junior college that has a lot of a Caribbean athletes that has been through there and mm. um they won a lot of national titles and stuff. So it was definitely a prestige school and a, was a good look for me. So that's, yeah. enough. that's why I made the decision because I didn't have the opportunity to go pro. How did you find the competitions, you know, with the NCAAs um, and other competitions in America? Because obviously they have way more competition than you would have done <laughs> in Trinidad. So definitely. what was that um, change like? It I actually think I kind of went into it and my change was, my transition was smooth because um, I would say one thing is running in Trinidad, there was few, I was more of a 400 meter runner when I was younger and mm-hmm. only at big championships was when I would run 46 seconds. Other than that, any regular race is 47. And 
when I went to the U.S., I, well, junior college at least, every single race I was running 46, every race. And it was, like, it just became normal and it was easier. So, I guess with the competition and the level, of, the quality of competition and at least that they had there, you have no choice but to step up a game each time you step yeah. on the track because it's either that or you get, you get licks. Though. You get both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, how have you made that decision to switch from 400 to 200? Was that like with your coach? And are well, you still with your coach from Trinidad, or do you have a coach in the US in your in your school system? Um, how I made this switch from 400 to 200? I'm still a 400 meter runner and a 200 meter runner. Um, mm. I just prefer the 200 meters and I feel like I'm better at the 200 meters that's why I pay a little bit more attention to it I still think I have a lot of potential in the 400 meters but honestly just I just need to figure out what really works for me and I think I'm still trying to figure out what exactly works best for me and um my coach that the the same coach that I had when I went to junior college so I did two years in junior college and then you leave junior college and go to a mm. division one school. And at the point in time when I was going to make my transition, he got a job at the University of Alabama. And I was like, well, I already run fast with him, so I might as well go. So that's how I kind of made my decision. <laughs> and today, to this day, he's still my coach. So, yeah. So did he, oh. have, did he have like a say in you moving from junior college and going to Alabama? Um, did that kind of help? Yes and no. He couldn't force me, but I felt more comfortable. So I gave him, when he left, I gave him the mm-hmm. benefit of the doubt. And I visited other schools also. Like I visited a and I visited LSU, um, Arkansas, Texas please. Tech, and Alabama. And by far, I felt like Alabama was a fit for me, not just because my old coach was there, but I felt really comfortable there. So. That's kind of how I made the decision to go there. So when you went into the university competitions and college competitions, how did you find the first few competitions? Did you have, you know, the rivals where you thought, okay, this guy is always going to be there. I have to always be on my game. So was it like, you know, a similar thing where you get Diamond League? You sort of know which coming to the Diamond Leagues. Was it a sort of atmosphere like that? It was, I don't like to compare college and professional track too much because it's really different. But it, mm. in that sense, it's kind of similar because, I mean, I was in the SEC and that's the greatest conference in the U.S. It's one of the hardest. It, but it would eat you up and spit you out like it's nothing. So <laughs> you had to be prepared. You have to be confident. confident. You had to be ready because everybody want to win. And you have a lot of fast guys there. So... My first competition, I want to believe, was an indoor 200. Mm. My, my last indoor 200, I think I ran like 2106, and that was maybe to, prior to that, maybe a year ago. And I was scared because it was my first time representing Alabama and full scholarship. I know they're expecting a lot from me. So I was like, shit, I had to run fast in this race, boy. And I went out there, dropped out 20, 20.57. It was world leading for like three weeks. And I was like, I was like, ah, right, this, this, this ain't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you did a race been... with... Go on, Victor. Uh, you did a race, I can't remember what year it was, I think 2018, with Coleman on your outside, but it was an indoor race. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what year? Was there a year difference with you guys, or were you around the same year? I think we both were juniors that year. So, uh, yeah, we definitely, we, we, we were the same year in college, yeah. Because that was when, I think, you won the indoors. Yeah. You won the indoors that year. And then, well, obviously, he's not been... Um, what was that like for you, obviously, from that transition from where you guys were and then him going pro? Who went pro first? Was it you? No, nah, he, he actually went pro first. They went pro after NCAAs. I kind of wanted to go pro, but... um. I talked to I talked to my coach about it, and he was like, "Look, if we go to world championships and we get a medal, then we could talk about it. But right now, just focus on where you are to focus on now, and then if it comes out, only comes along. But he was trying to not make me think about it. But it was hard for me because Mitchell Blake went pro, Coleman went pro. Um, mm. I went to school with Fred Curley. Fred went pro. 
I was like, wow, all my friends going pro and I had to come back and go to school. As my <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's it's a good thing because athletics is never promised. And if anything happened, at least you know, right, I have this to fall back on. Facts. So that it may not be a bad thing. Obviously, your coach had your best interests. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you could, you could have still gone back and, and studied anyway, but I feel like when you have the two at the same time, we have the studies in the other sport, you probably appreciate both of them more at different yeah. times. So like right now, you're going to appreciate the fact that athletics is your life, it's your, it's your career, it's how you're bringing in money. And then at the end of your career, you ain't got to worry about oh, what am I going to do now because you have something that's going to allow you to go into a job one time. And out of interest, what did you, what did you study? Human Environmental Sciences. Sorry, say that again. Human environmental sciences. Um, oh, and what does that entail, sir? Boy, <laughs> it is like, in a sense, a general degree. Um, mm. You could work in like HR. It's more like a social type degree. So it's like a human resources type thing. Um, I have some friends that, that um, have the same degree as I am. One of them, I think mm. he's a foreman for for a company so he he like manages um construction workers and stuff like that so it's a social okay. social type degree so yeah nice vibes mm -hmm. vibes vibes um what was your first major international competition my first major international competition was world indoors in 2012 in istanbul to turkey 2012 how old are you now <laughs> how old you say 2012 26 so you was like so what, was 18? A, yeah, yeah. That was the second year under 20. So yeah, I was 18. Okay. Was you the youngest on the team at that time? Youngest on the team. We got bronze in the 4x4. Four four. Um, if I recall in the final, this was my first indoor meet ever. If I recall in yeah. the finals, um, Conrad Williams, boy. I think it's Conrad Williams. This was my mm. first time. And um, I was trying to pass him on the turn and he bumped me so hard. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> Why was was the strength not there? Was the strength not there at that time? Nah, nah, it wasn't there. You know, I, I, yeah, I was done a skinny man already. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, just imagine how skinny I was back at that age. What, what was it like when um, you guys got your medal? At at that point in time, when we got our medal, it was like wow. I was like really overwhelmed because. I was just thinking, I'm the youngest on the team. We went there for four mm. by four. I was just hoping to make a final and we left with a medal. I was like, wow, this is my first. I cherished that medal so much. And I was like, well, I just overwhelmed. It was it was a great experience. I ain't gonna lie. And I was like, and this is just the beginning because it just started. When you huh? obviously joined in the team, who was the guy that kind of looked out for you? Or was there a person who looked out for you? Uh, two people. Two people, I would say Renny Kwao definitely looked out for me a lot on that team. And Jamal James, he's a 800-meter runner. He yeah. really, really had my back on that team. Because mm. they kind of show me the ropes of how it is when you big man thing now. When you're out there and, you know? Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. So then fast forward. So from 2012 to, say, 20... Did you go to the Olympics in 2016? Yeah. So between then and 2016, it was very college-based stuff. And then you get to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. How did that experience go for you? Because that's, that's like the mecca for us in, in athletics. Well, it was definitely a great experience. And to this day, I would always attribute going to 2016 Olympics was one of the biggest life-changing moments for me. Um, mm -hmm. I barely made the Olympic team for Trinidad. I was an alternate on the 4x4. I was after a terrible season, um, mm -hmm. I was running trash home all year 2016. And Olympic trials, I just came that sixth place and ran 46.02, which at the point mm -hmm. in time was my second fastest time. And yeah. I went to the Olympics, didn't get, didn't get um opportunity to compete, but I saw... Marshall Sideno break our national record. I saw Wayne Van Nieke break the world re record. And I sat there in awe and I was like, well, wow, if these guys could come here and do it, then maybe I could do it too. So it was definitely motivation for me 
going to the Olympics and seeing all these athletes run so fast. And to me, one of the biggest things was Marshall break, breaking um, our mm-hmm. national record because that had stand for so long. It was 44-21 by Ian Morris. And yeah. to see Sudeno come third in our, four, in our 400 meters in one of the fastest races in history, that was a big, big uh, motivation to me. So fast forward a year and Trinidad win gold in the 4x4. Four four. What cha- What did you do? Because you said you ran 46.02 and that was your second fastest run? Yeah. So that was your second fastest run at the time. And fast forward a year, you're now part of the, the team that's won the world champs. What did you do to change that? Because that's, that's, that's a massive improvement from a year where you was just spectating and now you're a world champ. When I went back um, to Alabama after the Olympics and after seeing all of this, I was like, boy, yeah, the chain hard because yeah, if you want to be on this stage, it's not going to come easy. Multiple practices, I vomit, dog. Multiple <laughs> practices, I vomit. I keep pushing myself. I keep pushing myself every practice in, in and out. I keep pushing myself. And eventually, mm. I had a really, really good season in um in the collegiate season, really good season in 2017. And mm. going into the world championships, I was, I was, I remember I had one class. And um while in class, I wasn't even doing no work. I was just watching <laughs> Diamond Leagues, trying to see <laughs> who's the fastest person who I would be up against and kind of doing statistics in my brain just to see well, what I would need to run to, um, to get a medal. Because mm. we were thinking about going pro. And when I got there and I got the medal in 200, I was like, wow, like, just to see where I was in 2016 and fast forward and mm. all this progress. I mean, and it was something I was praying hard for too. Eh? So I was like, you know, thank God, because I would have never thought back then that this would have happened. So, you know, that was just something really big for me and then for the four by four goal I know that we had a chance to um to be the US um mm. but I know it would have to be it would have, uh, in my mind I was thinking it had to pan out the way it did because yeah. I feel like if we were too far behind we, we didn't have a chance if we got the baton in front we definitely didn't have a chance if we got it in a close second I know for sure it would have been over and exactly how we thought it could have happened for us to win that same way it happened and the first thing came to my mind, I was like, wait, we really win this, boy? <laughs> and then, right? It was, it was crazy, dog. Yeah, that was crazy. I was in Grenada at the time. And it was me and my brethren, and we were sitting there. We, we just watched, like, the 4 by one And that was great because, obviously, Britain won. So we were like, okay, yeah, cool. That We didn't expect that, but tight race. Well done to the guys. So then we're sitting there, and we're watching the 4 by 4 and we were like, yo, this this race is looking a bit close. So we start sitting there for like, rah. Let me let me pour a drink and said, whoever, if the team who we both say doesn't win, you had to drink that particular shot. Mm. And uh, I ended up taking the shot. And I sat there and I thought, I should have trusted my instincts from the get-go. I should have really trusted my instincts. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Right. Then for, fast forward another year or nine months. Commonwealth Games. <laughs> Where is his internet keep going? <laughs> what was your confidence going into that? This guy, your internet keeps coming, I calling out. Clearly, my internet doesn't. Like me. <laughs> Virgin Virgin Media doesn't like me today. I don't know. Um, I hear fast forward another year. Yeah, fast forward a year, maybe about nine months, and we get to the Commonwealth Games. What was your confidence going into that? Well, my confidence was up because I opened in 2070, 2027. I ran a national record in the 300 meters indoor. I ran 32.10. And I was feeling sharp when um, I remember doing some 60s in the Commonwealth Games in mm. practice. And this, these were the fastest 60s I've ever run in, in practice. First one, I ran 6.10. Second one, I ran 6.0. And I was like, nah, I had three 60s. I was like, nah. So I called Mark Burns to time it. I was like, dog, I feel like I timing it wrong. I started by the wrong spot or something. I never ran that fast in 60s before. And we came, somebody else came, mark it off, and Mark was timing me this time. Mark timer, 6-0. I was like, shit, I was in shape. So mm. just going in there, I know I was in good shape. I knew I was strong enough to finish because because of the um, 200 I ran. And yeah. Yeah. 
right, all right. So, what ch- what's changed for you with all this with all these great things that you've done? Like, how has it changed your life? Um, it changed my life a lot. I'm able now to help out my family. Um, mm. I'm able now to motivate a lot of youths in Trinidad and Tobago and help out a lot of youths in Trinidad and Tobago. Show them that um, hard work does work, um, this pay off at the end of the day because I mean I wasn't I wasn't the slowest, but I wasn't the best athlete from Trinidad and Tobago neither. Um, mm. I never really make a world junior final individually, nothing like that. I didn't do anything too spectacular as a junior, other mm. than relays. And I hope it kind of, and I'm just glad that I could motivate some of the younger, younger ones in um, Trinidad and Tobago. So that's kind of so what changed do, a bit. Sorry to cut you. Do you do like the um, like school visits? I've, yeah, I've done some. I've done some. I kind of mainly go to the schools that I went to. Always, every time I have the time, I always go back to the schools that I went to and talk to some of the athletes and stuff. But some with some of the local sponsors I have, they have little camps and stuff that they do with um, younger athletes and not just in not just in um, track and field, but all sports. So yeah. you know, I go talk to them, um, show them some drills, share some experiences with them. What that would help them out. So yeah. So what's your um? Who's your sponsor at the moment? The Adidas. Yeah, Adidas. And have you got, um, what was that like, you know, signing that first contract? Was your Adidas your first, um, well, was, was it your first contract or did you get a different one before that? No, this was my first contract. Um, from young, the first spikes I ever wore was Adidas. So it kind of was like, yeah, it was, it was what I used to. The plan. <laughs> yeah. And it's what, it's what your team wears as well. <laughs> the greatest team in the history of the world, Manchester United. Yes, exactly. Know, other people might time, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna sit back. And I'll let you lot talk. I'll let you lot have a conversation for a sec because I ain't in. I ain't in this conversation. <laughs> Don't mind me. Greatest, greatest team in history. Just saying. Eh? I wish to Alex Ferguson was still here, but you know it is what it is. For the point. Have you ever been to a game? <laughs> I actually was supposed to. I was supposed to last year, but it was corresponding with a lot of things that I had to do. And it would have been really tight for me just to go there for one game and not get to see um, Manchester a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I didn't take the trip, but I will. When when things get back to normal, to normal I definitely will. Do you ever do you enjoy the players? Traveling? Yeah. Wait, one of my, my, my AirPods die, yeah, so... <laughs> so. <laughs> I didn't take this... Yeah, what's that? Do you ever um, speak to the players? You know, because the way we obviously you're now out there with the world, with winning your world championships and stuff. Could you mm-hmm. ever just like text a player in Manchester United and then um, have a chat with them? Nah, I wish. I wish. I wish I'd uh, probably text Pogba. <laughs> Ask for some boots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no nah, man, you should you should message him and be like, yo, I got a pair of spikes, I want you to sign them and you just wear them for the rest of the time. Oh uh, no. I would like to meet them though. I'd like to meet some of the players, but um I wish Cristiano was still there dog. Same. <laughs> Same. I don't know who I don't know who Amari is Again, support, you're... but greatest it's, player. It's almost Arsenal. Do. It's about Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Sorry for you, dog. Yeah, yeah, you lot have your jokes in it. You lot have your, <laughs> like, have your jokes. Don't worry. You lot make sure oh. my team is good. Don't worry. David, David Lewis Don't making all the yourself. mistakes. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry yourself. You lot making sport. It's good. Don't worry. Carl, Man, Carl, when, we come, when we come and, and, and take victories from you lot, it's all good. I'll remember this. Oh, I'll, I'll we'll, post we'll up and say, yeah. We you, see on that one. Europa League. you see the you see these two men here wanted to bust old bear joke with me on 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 the chat, but so it's good. It's good. <laughs> um saying that, um <sighs> in athletics, do you consider yourself famous? Not really. I think I have I have like a small fan base in certain places. I wouldn't mm. say I'm famous. But I would say I have fans in some places. I have a fan in Japan named Ayumi. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Ayumi and all the Japanese fans. But yeah. 
I know famous, but I have little fans here and there. Okay. And do you, when you get the DMs in the Instagram, is it hard to respond to all of them or are you on top and you just... Yeah, it's hard. It's honestly, really hard to respond to all of them. Um, a lot of them go to requests. So I probably mm. wouldn't even see it if I look to until I go to requests. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it's hard to respond to all of them. I could just imagine for athletes who are doing bigger things than me, they probably don't even see nothing. Mm. Okay. <laughs> just um, what we could do is like, you know, you can just leave a message on there for all your fans and then when it goes out you know everyone everyone is happy <laughs> everyone is pleased you know so we we'll all keep obviously there's talks of this season kind of still happening maybe not would you would you go and compete or would you just say nah i ain't in i ain't in a good place to, to be competing at my best so i'm just gonna take a time out and show um I would like to compete. I definitely would like to compete. Um, if it's done in a safe manner where it's mm -hmm. not as risky to travel to compete and mm -hmm. I have time, I have access to a track to get sharp and I have all these things going, for, going forward, then yeah, I don't mind competing because I don't really want to necessarily let this whole year go to waste and mm. not be yeah. able to know where I was at or know where I could have been. But... Um, mm. Definitely safety is one of, is a big, big thing for me because I don't want to go somewhere, get sick, God forbid, get and coronavirus, and then bring it back for my family. So, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, that. I'm pretty sure there'll be some events where they're like, yeah, I don't know how we'll make this one safe because 100 meter start line, every man's in arms length of each other. Things like the yeah. two and the four probably is probably okay because you're, really you're only really next to somebody if you're going past them. The, the long distance people, they're definitely going to struggle doing some things because they're going to go bunch up, bunch up. And then even even when you think like the warm up track, like I don't know what it's like internationally, but I imagine that they're not massive. So Not all of them are. Not all of them are. What's the best track you've been to? Doha. Not, not, not the Doha, Doha right now, but the one mm. that they had before. That is actually a really good track. Okay. Uh, what, what was what was good about it? What did you enjoy? I mean, our, our, that, was my, that was my first time in the league and I ran 99 there, so I, I actually <laughs> right. did that. Oh, yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> being, being from a hot country, how was it for you in Doha? You can't compare the Caribbean to Doha, boy. It, in, if... <laughs> I love Trinidad and Tobago even more after going mm. through how hot Doha is. <laughs> you still have like a, a cool Caribbean breeze, some nice sea mm. breeze. Doha is hot. It is hot, hot, hot. So people say training in, in hot time, it's going to help you out, but it's nowhere close because Doha is hot and dry. So it mm. was nowhere close. Is it just it. like... One of those air conditioning, like you just have a full lot of air conditioning going on. We in Doha? In the warm up, in, yeah, in the warm up trucks and stuff. Or were you warming up outside? Warming up outside, dog. It was hot, dog. It was like warming up for world championships. I was beer back warming up. I'd be so mad. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd be so yeah. mad because, cause you know, traditionally you warm up like with, with clothes and stuff. Or at least like a t-shirt. That heat yeah. just looks so stuffy that I'd be, I'd be wearing what I'm ready to go and racing for the whole thing, the whole warm up. I, I don't you, know. If you I couldn't even if you wear a body suit, you couldn't put on your body suit until after, until after the um, after you finish warming up because you warm mm. up with your body suit on or your tights on, it's gonna be soaking. Mm. Yeah, that <laughs> that definitely ain't for me. That that's not me because I get hot as it is. I mean, right now, my room says it's 30 degrees. My room is 30 degrees. So, Nadia. and Doha's at least another eight plus degrees minimum. So, nah, definitely not for me. Yeah. But I'd like to go visit, though, because they look, they look like they've got some cool buildings and, and, and what. Yeah. All right. So, how did the competition go for you, um, the old 2019 season? 19? 
2019 mm. season, boy, honestly, was one of the hardest seasons for me ever because I feel like I didn't find a good racing rhythm. And I was mm-hmm. struggling to find my rhythm all year long. So, like, I opened my season. I didn't run any indoors, but when I opened my season, I ran 20.4, which I thought I was way better than. I uh, mm. ran 20.4 again after that. Um, went to my first Diamond League 2021. I was kind of satisfied with that. Then I went back and ran 20.4. Then I ran two Diamond Leagues and I ran 20.5, 20.6. And I was like, nah, something not right. And mm. mentally, I was defeated. Um, I was doubting myself. And weird enough, I was having really good practices. Like, I would run some of the fastest times I've ever run in practice. But mentally, mm. I wasn't strong enough because I was dwelling on some of the bad performances and I let it take over me for too long. Um, I started to find some consistency see my uh, mental confidence closer to the Trinidad and Tobago um, championships. And... I had a little bit of consistency from there to the World Championships, but I didn't make the finals. And boy, I cried like a baby after that semi. <laughs> I walk into the tunnel, cry. Like, when I mean crying, your mother ever beat you bad. When I mean bad, <laughs> you ever beat you like bad. Bro, to this, listen, I'm, 20, I'm 29 years old. And to this day, that, that can still run sometimes if I do the wrong thing. So, <laughs> trust me. I was I, I crying you. like that, dog. And Johan Blake came to me and he was like, yo, I know you're sad. It's not the end of the world. It be like that sometimes in track. And he was like trying to make me feel better. And I mean, I really appreciate it. But I went outside yeah. and I was crying like a Your ball, baby man. dog. <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> a ball dog. But I mean, but- it really is like that in track and field sometimes. Um, you can't always have a good day, although you would want to. And I feel like Times like that is what make you enjoy the sport and enjoy victories because I feel like without joy there is no um, without sorrow there is no joy you know so they had to go hand in hand you have to enjoy both parts of it to you know have joy in anyone. Yeah. So were you looking forward to this season as sort of like a, you know? This I think the only... last se- yeah I think the last yeah. season this way I'm coming out you know fighting. <laughs> This was supposed to be my, my redemption here, but I mean, I had a half faith in God. Everything happened for a reason. Um, for some reason, something, I mean, coronavirus come and stop everything, but it had to yeah. have some greater good at the end of it. So all I could possibly, possibly do is focus on the things that I could control and control that and then leave the rest up to God. So that's, so what, I could for next, that's all I could do. Planning for next year. Mm-hmm. Again, talk to Chris to going on. So, te- I, how are you gonna do? Um, are you gonna do the indoor season next year? Definitely. I'll be Even looking for the, a sixty. With the... yeah? <laughs> What's that? I'll be looking for a sixty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel, I feel I could go. I want to go fast enough, so I don't have to run another one. So I would like to run <laughs> six six five. If I run six okay. seven, I know I want to run our next one just to run six six. But I had to yes, try. It. I just want to try one. Yeah, you'll have to just make sure you dip and you get a 669. Nah, 665, boy. 665. Yeah, if you get a 669, you still get a 66. <laughs> true, true. If I run 66, I, would, I wouldn't run it again. But clip that. I clip that 665. Because when I run 665, I will you say, you want to pull back this whole clip? I'll be like, yeah, he yeah. really said he'd run 665. And, uh, and, <laughs> if, if you run a 665, I'm going to sit back and be like, because <laughs> it ain't easy it ain't easy so have you got any plans for what events you want to do when um indoor season or just next year on the whole uh, just next year you know for the olympics you know what are you looking forward to doing your individual events or double up <laughs> double up it the only reason i would double up is if I had to be strong enough to jog 44. Anytime I could jog 44 seconds easily, I would double up mm. without a doubt. Right now, my PR is only 45.21, I believe. 45.20 mm. something. I'm not too sure. But 45.2. Any, and anytime I could jog 44 seconds, then I would double up. But right now, just 200, buddy. Just the deuce. <laughs> so what's, what's, your, what's your target for the two? 
target for the two win. <laughs> time comes irrelevant. Time is irrelevant. Win. See, I would love to run fast, dude. Eh? I would love to. I would love to run fast, but I could win the Olympic Games in twenty-one flat. I won. So this is the question. So we had this in a, in a previous podcast. <laughs> would you prefer I sitting up straight winning the Olympics <laughs> with a really good time, or would you prefer coming? Second, is it? Would you prefer coming second with a close to like with a, a PB? Record? Yeah, we we're, we're personal best. Winning, winning is more important. <laughs> you know why? Because track and field is only Check. popular when the Olympics comes around. People will know you as the Olympic champion and not as the Olympic champion mm. that ran nineteen something. You know, so. Mm. I definitely, I'm here, and also the check. You can't, can't go wrong with that check, dog. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, right, Olympic we had a, champion. We had another it could one. be anytime. We had another, we, there was another question we had. So that question was, would you prefer to win with this or this? This question is, who would you consider your greatest rival? Now, I have my, my thought process behind this. But and he, and Victor has his, so I want to hear yours. <laughs> all right, so I would answer this question and then I'll ask you all a question, right? Okay. Just because I cannot get the gif the question, but this is how I would answer the question. Yeah. My greatest rival at the end of the day is myself because I've shown that in good shape, in good mental shape, I could be the mm-hmm. best version of me and I could do a lot of special things. But I've also shown that in not good mental shape, I could be my worst enemy. I could dump myself and I wouldn't perform at a good level. So regardless of who in the race, I could control mm. myself. And I think I'm my greatest rival because sometimes it just goes like that. Sometimes you hit the iron while it hurts and then sometimes you're wondering, well, is the iron mm. even there? So, <laughs> but my question for you all now is... I think that's the best way like, to answer it. <laughs> do you all mean like an actual person? Yeah. Alright. Um well, to be fair, of... to, to be fair, even the answer that you gave kind of answered the question. But okay. But at the same time, yeah, you you know, track and field, especially where you come through the you mentioned a few people that you came through the collegiate system with. Yeah. And and they're obviously professionals now along with yourself. So outside of those guys, is there anyone else who you kind of be like, Yeah, you know what? I, I check for them and I see where they're at. And if I, if I know they're in the race, there's one person I want to be like, yeah, <laughs> I'm taking you down today. Um, have a lot of guys. Uh, one thing I like about um, 200 meters on the circuit right now is that mm. everyone PR kind of close to each other. You know, even the guys are around 198. Mm. So like, um, Aaron Brown, Mitchell Blake, mm. um, I mean, Noah, we are ahead of us in times, but um, Julian, um, all these guys is, is always a close race. And I'll just put attribute to my, my um, 2018 season. You would go on the line and you would be mm. like, don't know what's going to happen because you have to execute mm. a certain way to beat some people, but then they might come and surprise you. So uh, the names I call is yeah. the names I will call right now. If I miss out anybody, then. Okay, it's, it's not it's All not right, cool. it's not a shout out session so uh. <laughs> nah man it's, it's it's your time so that's all good um all right so to wrap up the interview i always do a round of quick fire questions to mm. to see what your first response is going to be and you can't go back on your answer so whatever Wait, you say first that's as it. he as he asked the question when to ask us yeah, 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 I already do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my internet call out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, first question: What's your favorite type of food? Roti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. Pause. Chicken, beef, shrimp. All right. So lamb. I kind of stuck in between. I, I, I'm a chicken person. I love chicken. But it had two mm. types of roti that I really like. Curry chicken roti 
and mm-hmm. stew chicken roti. I don't know if what, you all have that, but stew chicken in roti is wow. Mm. See, you're throwing too many variables here, man. I just say a nice curry, a nice curried roti is try, good. If you never me. try it, try it. Stew chicken roti. All right, all right, cool. I'm I'm gonna put that one down to try. But a beef roti, you could you could never go amiss with that either. Never eat that before be, in to, my life. To be fair, you can never go amiss with any roti. But that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a story for another day. Um. What is your favorite genre of music? All right, honestly, I'm just going with you right now. <laughs> Trinidad dance hall, and I know you're gonna add, yeah, it's hard, you're gonna have Jamaicans that saying <laughs> things, but Trinidad dance hall right now, real bad, boy. So, I, so you're, I'll go with the zest, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the zest bad right now, dog. So, I'll say zest. What's your favorite song in the Zest thing? Um, it have a guy named Rebel Six. He have a song mm-hmm. named Squeeze. I like that tune. Okay. Was, would that be something you warm up to? Would yeah. Would I get you too yeah, hyped? Yeah. Nah, boy. It is gay. Just right, boy. You have a nice right. smooth kind of zone, but you're still ready to strike, boy. All right. KFC. Wendy's. Mario's Pizza or TGI Fridays? KFC. You're mad? KFC. <laughs> KFC. What else you go eat? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you know, see, it's a bit of a different thing because KFC here is not the same as Trinidad. But I could murder Mario's Pizza, pizza any time of day. Caribbean pizza is different from American pizza and Caribbean pizza tastes way better. Like Pizza Hut in Trinidad, this tastes so different from Pizza Hut in the States. Bro, listen, I think a- anytime you go to a Caribbean island, the food is just better in general. Yeah, <laughs> so, facts. But all right, KFC, a two piece or a burger? Ah. It depends on what I'm feeling like, man. <laughs> Um, right now, just, you could go to KFC right now. Nah, my gag, I might take a two piece. I might take a two piece. But the burger, the zingan, the zingan, the crunch out is lush. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, best country you visited? Hmm, Australia, Commonwealth Games, dog. Australia, I had to go back to it far, but I would definitely go back to Australia. How yes. long was the journey for you guys? Well, for me, I flew from Alabama, and I had to fly from Alabama to Atlanta, Atlanta, mm-hmm. which was about an hour and a half, Atlanta to LAX, which was about five or six hours, and from mm-hmm. LAX to um, Brisbane, and that mm-hmm. was like 15, 16 hours, though. That's and a long tall, travel. <laughs> Are you t- you're, you're quite tall, right? Yes, yeah, six one, six flat. Give or take. And them seats. <laughs> yeah. You're on your own. Um, okay. Are you a carnival goer? All right, not really. I went I used to go a lot when I was younger. So like mm-hmm. from from standard one, I go in yeah. carnival. I went up to when was the last time I went, dog? I went from standard one to like about form five. Mm-hmm. And I recently went uh Miami Carnival. Mm-hmm. By far outside of Trinidad, the baddest carnival I ever went, dog. Outside of Trinidad, Miami Carnival was bad. Well, just mainly the juvie. That was See, real bad, boy. Wait. Miami's on my list. It's definitely on my list of places to go. I ain't reached there yet. Outside of Trinidad, it's a toss-up between BIM and London. But not for Juve. Definitely not for Juve because London I would, London Juve I would, is cold in the morning. So <laughs> I would like to go a Grenada Juve. Because I find they they really stick to some of the traditional things that mm. we had, but we kind of change it up now. But they really stick to the, tra- the tradition. I don't really like the the oil and stuff too much, but I I, I don't mind seeing it and experiencing it. 
Mm. Well, I, that same year that I was in Grenada, best believe my good friend, and I won't call him up because I know he's going to watch this later. Yeah. He was supposed to come and knock for me to tell me that he was going. I woke up, the man was gone. Couldn't get through to this man. This was about maybe three o'clock in the morning. He never reached back to where we were staying until three o'clock the next day. Ooh. Yeah, that's all right. That that for me, I said, yeah. I don't I don't know if I could do that. Can't even like just being out in that heat, I would have died. I would have died. <laughs> no, you have well, yeah, to have a level of fitness. You see, like how oh, we train hard to run fast. You had to have a drinking tolerance fitness. You had to have a hot sun fitness. You had to have a wine fitness. You had to have all these kind of, yeah, you had to have these fitnesses up. If your levels ain't up, then you ain't go hang. They, they, they were, I went to, I can't, I went to that carnival 2016. And me and one of my friends, we done about four or five parties in within the space of 24 hours. I yeah. kid you not. You see, by, by number three, you, you hit that slump like yo, tired. I just want to go home. But 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 I I want to go home. <laughs> but then you see the inclusive bar and you're like, boy, levels turn up again. But that next day, where the sleep out, I, I could have slept more. But we had more parties to go to, so you know yeah, that's how it is. Me. <laughs> but that's put Trinidad Con was definitely the best, best party. And that's the whole experience I've ever been. I don't think I could ever top that up unless I'm getting married. If I get married, phew. Hmm. It's going to be a whole <laughs> set. <laughs> Listen, it definitely will be a whole set. Where? Where, I don't know, but it will definitely be a set somewhere. But listen, um, thank you very much for coming on the podcast um, and taking time out of your day. It's much appreciated. Um, hope. The season, the, whatever's left of the season when it comes, if it comes, it goes well for you and you stay safe and you stay active and your family is safe and when when you're back in London we'll have to do this face to face Facts dog and you know thanks for having me here, a long time coming but finally make it here and I'm glad to <laughs> yeah. be here dog, one yeah. thing I will say though, you ain't asked me what that has been binge watch and Ooh. by far, I can't believe I sleep on this show, but top boy, wow, that shit was you know bad, dog. Cool. So you binge watch top <laughs> boy. Um, what movies are you into? Um, and when you say bit, and you know what, when you say binge watch top boy, you watch season one to. In one go, yeah, I watch, just yeah. So I watched I watch Summer House in one go. Yeah, that shit was good. <laughs> and yeah. then I was like, wait, you have, you have another one too. So I watch. I was like, yeah, what happened to this Sheen? What happened to Sully? And then yeah, yeah. I was like, now I will lie. Damn that. Do do do. I want to encourage you. You'd say nothing wrong, eh? But just <laughs> watching that make me feel like being a top boy. Listen, you are the Commonwealth Games gold medalist. You use a top boy already, <laughs> so and you had a gold chain, so you're in the zest thing. So, <laughs> you know what more top boy you could want? Uh, but, um, okay, so top boy after top boy, what's the next thing that you'd binge watch? Uh, honestly, after watching top boy, I just kind of like the kind of drug shows. So, mm. like, I watch Breaking Bad. I watch um, Ozark. Ozark was good. That was um, like, man. That was a mad, that was weird show. So that was, that was there, good. I've never watched it. Have you know? That's, that's I've, good. I've never watched Ozark. Never. I slept on that one, too. And after watching it, I was like, I should have tried because it didn't look like it mm. was good. When you read the, when you read the, um, the little thing telling you where that boy is, like, a accountant. Laundering mm. money for a cartel, and you're like, this could <laughs> never be interesting. And you sit around watching, and you're like, wow, like, but the boy hands down, dog. I, I, I used to listen to Dave, but like small bits of mm. Dave songs, only the really, yeah. really popular one that that would yeah. go on mainstream. And after watching the boy and how he, how we um, 
acted as moldy. I was like, yeah, hey, this man kind of cool dog. So I kind of started to look into some of his songs and think more. And Dave is actually a real good artist. He was by far my favorite character in that whole series. No. He was just on crud from, from episode <laughs> from one. From day one. <laughs> on from day one, this man was just like, yeah, no one can tell me nothing. I said, yeah, you man, cool. you man say, top offender, crazy extender. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Listen, you see that? I was hearing that everywhere I went after that. And I worked, really? I worked in a school. I worked in a, I worked in a school. And um, literally, there was maybe five or six students. And these are... They're not bad, but they're just, they want to be the little shits. And I yeah. say loud and proud. <laughs> and I kid you not, they would walk into the class any day of the week and that's their entrance. And I'm just sitting there like, I can't even tell them off. Because you know, I, I, know, like, cause I know we're going to have this conversation when, when the work is done. So let yeah. me just let that ride. Let me just let it slide. But then I see them do it in the next class. Let me do it. And I'm just looking at them like, yeah, you see, me and them ain't the same. Can't be doing them things <laughs> over there. Um, all right, movies. What type of movies are you into? Um, <clears throat> actions, thrillers. I really like thr- thrillers because I like mm. the suspense. I don't really like horror so much, but I feel like th- thrillers are really close to horror. In between. So I'll say, yeah, mm. I'll say actions and thrillers. I like it. It was a good movie. Uh, it it really? won on it chapter two. I yeah, I really like. I don't know why. I just really like it. I like Pennywise yeah. as a character. I don't think it was like horror really. No, it was, it, it, it's it was that in between. Yeah. It was that in between. Yeah. It's, it's not quite a horror, but it's it, it had that vibe to it. Yeah. Um, are you into comics? I'm a big DC and Marvel fan. More Marvel than DC, but yeah. Who's I your like favorite superhero Marvel movies. Character? Iron Man by far, he's a Tony Stark. When he did, I right. almost cry. <laughs> All right. All right. What you want to say? What you want to say? Who's yours? Who's yours? You are so Thor. <laughs> Thor, Thor is mine. Yeah, same. Thor would have to be <laughs> yeah, mine. Same. But, but, it's, but I didn't like Thor like in the first two movies. Mm. It, and yes, they were doing like, if you follow like the comic, that's actually who he was, that whole like Shakespearean kind of talk, like that's him. But the way that it was portrayed in the movie, it wasn't really me. I was kind of like, nah, I ain't really feeling that. They add too much but, jokes to him. He was, he started yeah. to get too comical. Yeah, I didn't like but, that. But either. then, I, but I kind of liked that side because him as a person is that type of person. And I think when you can give them a role and they can kind of be themselves at the same time, I think it kind of works because then it's, because it's not as forced as them trying to be. Yeah, they're more comfortable funny. in their own skin now. Yeah. yeah. So I think that was good. I kind of like that aspect. And then him turning fat in the last movie, I was like, <laughs> boy, you're not doing my man wrong. You're doing my, you're doing my friend wrong. But, and then for DC, <laughs> who's your favorite superhero? <sighs> Flashway. I think he's the most powerful. I think he's very much underrated. Because people say Superman and people say all these these things, but he's literally mm. the fastest man in the world. If he does, or if he close to dying, he just need to go back in time. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but come on now, you know that they, they say the whole, you got to mess with time and it, it go mess up something else. So Mess with time you or mess with careful. your life. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I was Flash, I would mess time up just to save my own life. Just saying. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna disagree with that. I'll do exactly the same. <laughs> if if I know that I just messed up, I'm going back in time and writing that wrong. And if it messes someone else, well, at least I know I'm good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you say so, you watch the TV show. Yeah. Barry or Wally? Um. So wait, is it the the um the the series with um Black Wally? Oh, we just talk more cartoons or all Wally's on the whole. Um, we could do both. We could do both. Um, I prefer Barry in the real TV show. I don't really like um Wally as a character so much. Um, mm. I like Wally in Young Justice. That Wally is a good yeah. Wally. Um, yeah. Hmm. yeah, that's about it. Young Justice was good too. 
Did you watch the um the Justice League that just come out? There was, there was like um, the one with Dark Side. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that shit was bad, boy. Listen, I <laughs> sat there first first ten minutes. I was like, yo, what is going on? This this is different. But he was like, wait, you was... mean I mess everything up and I had to go back again? Like, shit. Right, and that I liked because obviously it, they linked everything together instead mm-hmm. of just making them all separate. And I was like. Yo, Dark Side is a bad motherfucker. This man yeah. is different. Mm-hmm. Like, but then I like the fact that you know everyone says, "Oh, Superman's the best," and da 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 da. I like when I see Superman get his ass handed to him. I love it. I, yeah, I, me I too. Absolutely love it. Like, cause it just shows that you know, yeah, he's the man of still, and he has all these things. But yo, bad man still him like, exist. Mm-hmm. And. And it ain't even to say like he just gets beat by Dark Side. Like Dark Side literally takes this man and, and makes him look like a little bitch. So yeah, but normal, normal. Yeah, yeah, for real. But um, yeah. Look, we we could do this all day. I could be here all day having these movie chats and 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 comic book hero chats because th- that's my kind of thing. But I know you've got things to do. I know Victor's got things. So we will reconvene this at, at a later date. <laughs> Um, once again, thank you for coming on. It's much appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you, bro. Yeah, dog. Thanks again, yo. Y'all be safe out there.